for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean when a quality control specialist or someone in that situation um, takes multiple samples and you're trying to come up with an estimate for the mean. Okay, so what we have here is a quality control manager has taken four samples with five observations each of the diameter of a specific part. The following table shows his findings. So what we have is sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, and all of the respective data points for each sample. Okay, so where you're going to start is you have to find the individual mean of each sample. So to do that, what we're going to do is, um, for this specific video, I'm gonna show you how to use the TI Inspire to find each of these. But if you were doing this by hand, what you would do is you would add up all of the values. So this formula right here is saying that the mean of each sample J, so J is the sample that it's talking about. So if I had X bar sub one, that would be talking about sample one. X bar sub two would be talking about sample two. That way you can just keep track of all of your different samples. And you're going to take I is the individual data point for each one in the sample. So like um, I equals one would be five, two would be 5.3, five. Okay, so this formula, even though it looks scary, it's really just the same thing of finding the mean. It's just the sum of all the values in that sample divided by the number of values in each sample. So in this case, N would be five. Okay, um, I'm not really gonna show out all of the work for this because um, the purpose of this is to show you how to use the TI Inspire to help you. So what I'm going to do is grab my calculator and we're going to go to a list and spreadsheet screen and I'm going to actually put this in four different columns. Okay, um, so I have my data points listed out on paper for me. So if you need to pause the video once I've shown you how to open up the spreadsheet, you can and come back to this screen or you can follow along with me. So with my calculator, I'm going to start a new document for this one because I don't have anything going on. And I'm going to add a lists and spreadsheet. So you can call each one whatever you want. I'm just going to call it S1 for sample one. Okay, and then I'm going to put in the data points for sample one. So for this one, it was 5.0, 5.3, 5.0, 5.3, 5.0, 5.0. And always check to make sure that you plug them in correctly because sometimes you make mistakes. And then we're gonna put in S2. So I'm gonna plug in S2. Okay. Um, if you do this, you have to do, I hit enter on accident instead of the down arrow, it doesn't like that. So 5.3, 4.8, 5.2, 5.1, and 5.0. Okay. And next one, we're gonna put in sample three, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put in sample four too, just because it'll make it easier. Okay, so we're gonna finish filling this in. Sample three, 5.1, 5.2, 5.2, 5.1, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0. And then the last one is 5.0, 5.3, 5.0, 5.1, and 5.2. Okay, so we have all of our data values in. I'm just going to pause it, make sure I have everything correct, and then I'll come right back. All right, so I verified all of the data, made sure that it was all correct, and it is. So I have everything down that I have on my paper. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna add a fifth column. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one the sample mean. So I'm just gonna label it samp mean, um, that this is going to talk about the sample mean. So I'm going to find the answers. So basically, let me go back to my screen here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna find the mean for each sample, but I'm gonna do it in a list and spreadsheet because after we find each sample, we're gonna compute the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And this is going to be an estimate of the mean. It's not going to be the um, actual mean because we don't know what that is. Okay, um, the population mean is unknown. So a lot of times when we don't know the population mean, we will find multiple samples and then we will find the mean of all of the sample means. So to do that, what I have to do first is find each individual sample mean. 
And like I said, I am going to put it in its own column so that I can use the calculator to help me find the approximate mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Okay, so let me go back to my calculator. So what I'm going to do in the sample mean column is I'm going to type in the formula equals and the word mean, remember that it does go up right once it notices that this is a command and I'm going to put a parenthesis. And for this first one, what I want to do is I want to find the mean of sample one. And I'm just going to hit enter and it gives me 5.02. So the mean of sample one is 5.02. So if I added up this entire column, the 5, 5.3, 5, 4.7, 5, 5.1, 5 and divided it by 5, I would end up with 5.02. Okay, um, moving into the second one, and I will do another video where I do show you how to do this by hand in case you have to show out all the work. Um, but the purpose of this one was just to show you how to use the calculator. So equals, and I'm going to type in the word mean again, and this time I'm going to do it for sample two. So I'm going to hit the var button and choose sample two and enter and it will change it. The nice thing about doing this in here is that if I were to change something over here, because I put a formula over here, it's automatically going to remember that formula. The TI-84 doesn't do that, but um, the TI Inspire does remember the formula that you typed in. So if I go back to it, it actually shows me equals the mean of the variable S2. So if I notice that I entered something wrong, um, I, if I change it, it will automatically change this column too. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing, equals the mean. I'm going to go ahead and do all of them, and then I'll just go back and write them all on the next page. So this time I'm going to do S3. And then the last one, we're going to do equals the mean of S4. All right, so now I have all of my means. I'm going to go ahead and write them on my paper. So the 5.08... And the diameter was in inches, so don't forget your units on this. So it would be 5.02, 5.08, 5.16, and 5.12. So now what we are going to do to compute the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means, we're going to use this formula. And we actually notate the mean as x bar bar. So this is the mean of the sample means. Okay, and basically what it's going to be doing is using this formula here where I take each of the individual sample means and add them up and then divide by the number of samples that I have. So if I were doing hand calculations, I would add 5.02 plus 5.08 plus 5.16 plus 5.12 and divide it by four since I have four samples. Okay, um, I can actually do both of these in the, the calculator at the same time, so I'm going to go ahead and um, show you the other formula also. Um, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means, uh, we will use this formula since sigma sub x is unknown. If you know the population standard deviation, then you just use the central limit theorem where sigma x bar is equal to the population mean divided by the square root of the sample size. But since we don't know the population standard deviation, it wasn't given to us, we can come up with an estimate of it by finding the standard deviation of the sample um, mean. So basically what we're going to do first, if you were doing hand calculations with this, what this formula is telling you to do is you have to find each individual mean, so that's this part up here, the 5.02, 5.08, 5.16, 5.2, and subtract the value that you get for the mean for this one, okay? And then you square each of those deviations and sum them all up and divide by m, which is the number of samples where it's four, and you take the square root of that, okay? Um, so it's just like finding the standard deviation of a regular sample, but this time we're going to do it for the sample means. Okay, which is why, going back to my calculator, I set up each of these to be in a column because now what I can do is I can go to a calculator screen. So I'm going to hit Control and I, and I'm going to go in to, um, sorry, let me add a calculator screen, option one, I'm getting ahead of myself, um, and then go into the menu and I'm going to choose statistics and stat calculations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a one variable statistic. I just want to use one list, and that one list that I want to use is the sample mean. 
Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to use those formulas that I just showed you on the other page, um, where X bar is found by adding up all of the individual means and dividing by the number of means. And then we're going to look at this one right here, the sigma X. Um, this is going to be the population mean of that particular sample, so the 0 0.05172. So again, the purpose of this video is not to show you all of the work, but to show you how to get it in the calculator. I will do a hand calculator one, or a hand calculations one where I do show out all of the work in case you have to show it out. Um, when I do get that created, I will put a link to it in here. Okay, um, so we would say that the X bar bar is equal to 5.09 and since it said to four places i'm just going to add a zero to the end it ends up being exactly 5.095 so if you were doing hand calculations you would just plug in each individual value so that would be the 5.02 5.08 5.16 and 5.12 and you would individually subtract this mean of the sample means from it then you would square the deviations add them all up and then divide by four and then take the square root of that final answer so it's much quicker to plug it into our calculator okay um, so the sigma x bar like i said i just want to show you again where i found this from make sure that you put the notation because if you notice in the calculator it just says sigma x so that's where you as the human have to remember when you use specific formulas okay um, so this is the sampling distribution and i should have another um, X bar bar because we are really dealing with the means of the sample means. Okay, um, but this ends up being 0 0.05172. And I forgot my inches on both of those. So this would be the mean of the sample means. And this would be the standard deviation of the sample means, which is the estimate that you would use for the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Okay, I have one final thing that I want to talk about because a lot of times once you have found the mean of the sampling distribution and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, you want to set up control limits. Okay, and so basically what you want to do is your control limit itself is always going to be the plus or minus three times your sigma sub x bar. Okay, so um, this would really be the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Okay, and so if we work this out, we would do three times the 0 0.0517. So if we just plug that in, um, let me go down on here. And we would just do three times 0.0517. And we see that we get 0 0.1551. On this, it tells us to round to three decimal places, so always just watch what it says to do. So this would be approximately plus or minus 0 0.155. Okay, so this is our control limit. Now to find the upper limit and the lower limit, you simply just add or subtract. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the lower control limit and the lower control limit is just going to be our x bar bar minus the three times sigma x bar. So um, what we would do is we would plug this in. And so we would take the 5.095 minus the 0.155 and we get 4.940 inches. So this would be our lower control limit threshold. If it's outside of that, then that's more than three standard deviations away from the mean, um, which is considered an unusual value. And then our upper control limit, we would just take the X bar bar plus the three times sigma X bar bar, and we would add the 5.095 plus 0.155 and always look at your textbook because I know that there's a lot of different notations um, in statistics so sometimes um, and you know what I have those switched on I, I sorry I wrote four I looked at the wrong place on my paper let me switch that really quickly this one is supposed to be 5.250. I looked at that and went, okay, my upper control limit can't be less than my lower control. What did I do? So I even make mistakes when I'm doing these, but 
it's okay. All right, so your control limits would be the 4.940 to 5.250. So just to recap what happened, because I know I gave a lot of information in this video, um, you wanna start by finding the mean of each individual sample, and then you're going to find the mean of all of the means. So you're gonna average together the means, and then you're gonna find the standard deviation of um, your sample means, and then to find your control limits, you would just multiply by three for the three standard deviations above or below. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.